Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English summary, a just and a translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Murana Kamru Zamasab Tahmad Barakatuhum, which took place on Wednesday, the 25th of Rabi'ul Akhir 1443, corresponding with the English date, 1st of December 2021. This majlis took place after the Maghrib Salat at falah e darain Islamiyah in Bilaspur, Muzaffar Nagar, UP, India. Hazrat Wala starts off by quoting the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'malu bita'atillah wa attaqu ma'asiyallah wa muru awladakum bi imtithal al-awamir wa ijtinab al-nawahi Thereafter, Hazrat Wala goes on to say that you have heard much already. This particular hadith that I have quoted to you is not that famous. Ashami Alim has quoted this in his kitab and I have also made reference of it in my kitab, the Tarbiyat Awlad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would always at every occasion give some type of guidance, advice, nasihat or whatever it may have been. And after every salat also, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa would say something or the other. But then too, the Sahaba had so much of enthusiasm, quest, desire and a deep thirst that they continued Asking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for advices despite this scenario or the abundance of nasihat given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as I have mentioned earlier. A sahabi comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, Izni wa awjiz. O Nabi of Allah, advise me but let it be concise. We would also find that. Another hadith states that a sahabi comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying to Nabi of Allah, Man najat, in what does success lie? Tell me something of success. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, Amlik alayka lisanak, control your tongue, make hifazat of your tongue. These days we find there is gross negligence in this regard. Rather, people are not cautious at all. Become the owner, the malik of your tongue, so you can see how to control your tongue. Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah, is quoted that an old woman came on the demise of her, her son, saying that my son is in the gardens of Jannah. A sahabi then said, you are saying that, uh, isn't it possible that he may have said some a futile talk, this, that or the other, due to which he could have been taken to task. That's how seriously the Sahaba held futile talks or useless talks. Min husni islam il mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni From the beauty of the Islam of an individual is that he leaves out that which does not concern him. The second part of the hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wal yasa'aka baytuk, that let your home be comfortable for you. That you do not have to come out due to which you may get involved in sin. Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Ahmad Sahib used to say that sin, guna, is fire. The third part of the hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wa buki ala khati'atik that cry over your sins. Who can say that they haven't committed sin? Rather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself is making a general statement to the Ummah. Ala kullukum khatta wa khayrul khatta'in at-tawwabun that all of you are sinners and the best of the sinners are those who repent and turn in Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was ma'asum, innocent, every day, so many times, he would make tawbah and istighfar. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave hidayat, instruction, and ta'aleem 
for everything. Therefore, we would find that this deen is complete and perfect. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'amati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. Regarding no other deen did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make such a statement. From the time of Adam alayhi salatu wa salam right till the end. There is in a hadith we learn that this structure that from the time of Adam alayhi salatu wa salam one one brick was being put in right until the end and there was just one brick short and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and that brick is put in and the structure comes to completion and fruition. So the deen is complete and kamil, perfect. The mutakallimin, these specialists in the field of aqaid have made so much of mehnat and they have brought this year to perfection, takmil, our aqaid. You pick up the books of aqaid and you will be able to appreciate that. The fuqaha and the, ju ju the jurist, they have made so much of mehnat on the masail and put it into order, the usul, the furu'at, etc. that we find perfection in that line as well. Regarding the students of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Muhammad rahimahullah would hardly sleep at night and people would say to him, Hazrat, why don't you take a rest and rest a bit? And he would say, if I go and sleep, then what would the ummah do? The ummah are banking on me. They've got their trust and confidence in me. If I now go and sleep and I don't make mehnat on the masail, what would happen? Jahangir, the king, of the whole indo Pak subcontinent, he would also sleep very less at night. And it was said to him, Hazrat, why don't you sleep? And he would say that I do not want to waste my, <coughs> my precious life in sleeping. I do not want to waste my precious life in sleeping. Allahu Akbar. Mujaddid al Faithani used to say, Khabe gira darpeshast that deeds the deep sleep is still coming referring to that of the akhirah meaning why, why would we want to sleep and spend our lives here in sleeping so the category of the aqaid is there we spoke about the mutakallimin and the masala masail fuqaha have done so much regarding fiqh and then we have the batin this internal in the heart and the Sufiya, Sufiya, the Sufis have made so much of mehnat on that and have opened up things and have put everything into kitab form, into paper form that we can understand this path correctly. And they have brought it from heart to heart, generation to generation, that how should a person's heart be? He should make so much of mehnat on it that he can actually be worthy of being presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, let this heart of ours be for him only. There should be no layani. In fact, on the day of Qiyamah, a person will regret upon that time. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالُوا وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On the day of Qiyamah, where no wealth or progeny children will be of, of any benefit except for that person who comes with such a heart in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is salim, completely clear and clean and pure from all type of ailments and sicknesses and diseases like that of kibar, pride, like that of hasad and jealousy. So what did they actually do? Sakaw Wa'asqaw, they drank and they let others drink as well, piya or pilaya. Agar geti sarasar baad girad, chirage mukbila hargiz namirad. If a cyclone, if these cold winds would come and overtake this entire world then too 
the lanterns of the special servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be turned off. It will continue burning, meaning that flame of love in the hearts of the awliya. Allahu Akbar. So, you know, I just been, the ulama had called me and it was a very fruitful discussion about what will happen and how to do and what will we do, etc. But we will have to do the very same which the Sahaba done. And that is Dua, Lajajat, Farma Bardari, Obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say and recommend in times of restlessness and like the present time that we are going through, he would say recite this ayat of the Quran abundantly. Rabbana لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم That O oh Allah do not make us a target for the disbelievers but now you would ask I mean we're asking Allah Ta'ala for help and it's such so beautiful but if you ponder on this particular ayah you would ask yourself the question why is it واغفر لنا ربنا O oh our Allah forgive us it is to indicate to us most clearly that these calamities and difficulties actually come due they actually come due to the they actually come due to the sins of people they actually come due to the sins of people therefore Allah Ta'ala is saying, ask forgiveness for your sins. Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam, also regarding him, what was it? وَكَذَٰلِكَ nunjil mu'minin. It was not said about any ayat of the Qur'an Majid. It was not said about any ayat of the Qur'an Majid that success would be given to the believers as well. Najat. Except this particular ayat, the ayat a karima, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka, inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, towards the end, what would he do? He would recommend this ayat and dua uh, specifically, particularly, abundantly. And Hazrat Marana Muhammad Ahmad Sahib, this was always his practice. In fact, at night when he would get up, then his attendants or the khadims that would stay, he would tell them that recite this 300 times, recite it 300 times. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to spiritually nurture and give spiritual upbringing, tarbiyat to the ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gave him that task and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left such a beautiful namuna and example. Similarly, the ulama as well, they would have to carry out the same task and they should also leave behind an example like this. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says also, Ashabi kan nujum, that my companions are like shining stars. Whichever one of them you would follow, you would be rightly guided. For 23 years, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made an effort on the Sahaba. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala and describes the Sahaba himself saying, Aqalluhum takallufan. They had no takalluf, that something must be like this or like that or the other. No. The, the least of that was found in, in them. Aqmaquhum ilman. And they were the, when he came to knowledge, they were the deepest in knowledge. Wa ahsanuhum akhlaqan. And when it came to character, they had the most beautiful character. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's akhlaq, what did he teach? It was that of Tawazu, humility, inabat, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there was no such a thing of ananiyat. This that I can do and attributing everything to oneself. Rather, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negated that. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to get rid of that. And there was no type of, 
of claims that I can do this and I can do that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is advising. A great mystery alim is giving this lecture. I heard it. And very young as well, maybe about 25 years old. And he's got this whole congregation, hundreds, thousands of people in his majma listening to his uh, was and he says that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is advising a young lad between the age of eight to ten years old, and he's teaching him about the great concepts of the batin, the internal, about asking only from Allah, putting one's trust only in Allah subhanahu wa taala, and then he says that Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught a young lad this, but today. Such a time has come that people of the age of 60, 70, 80 don't even know the meaning of these terminologies of isti'anat, of tawakkul, etc. And the list goes on. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught and he advised that command your children to read salat at the age of 7 and at the age of 10, if they don't read salat, then beat them. And also separate their beds. لا يسلم الجرة في كل مرة Because on every occasion that vase and that jug would not remain completely safe and sound. It is bound to break some way or the other. That's why we have to exercise precaution. When they either reach the age of 10, make sure that their beds are separated. Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, he was very particular about his madrasa and he would go on to say, I am so worried that students should not come with their bad behavior, behavior to my institute due to which they would spoil the character of other students. So they loved this, they showed it and they enjoyed it. They tasted it and they allowed others to drink from there as well. Saqaw wa asqaw. Allahu Akbar. So the ulama should do the very same. This chair is actually the chair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> a person who's sitting here is not sitting originally, but rather as a deputy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He should think before speaking. He should just not say anything. Rather, he should calculate, understand exactly what he is saying and not say things which are inappropriate or <clears throat> Hazrat Mawlana Habib Rahman Azmi, on one occasion he gave a bayan and it was just of that of three minutes. And if I can sum it up that three minutes, what was his message to the ulama that whenever you quote the hadith that you are quoting, at least say the Rawi's name, at least mention the narrator's name. Allahu Akbar. On one occasion, Ali radiallahu ta'ala comes to the Jama Masjid of Basra and he sees different different halqas of people uh, giving waz and nasihat. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala stopped all of them and then he started interrogating them, questioning them that who gave you permission? And he comes across as he goes from group to group, he finds a uh, Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, I mean who we know as Sayyidu Ta'ifa. And he said to him that who has given you permission? Let me test you first. Let me take an interview of you first. If you pass, fine, you will be retained. And if not, you will have to be asked to leave, meaning stop your gatherings and your majlis. That's the amount of importance that the Khulafai Rashidin Ali radiallahu ta'ala attributed to people who were giving was that not just anybody could do that. So he said, and he asked him, what is the foundation of all good? So Hassan Basri answered, al wara it is piety. It is piety. And he went on to ask, what is the foundation and the basis of all evil and wrong? He said, Tama, to have hopes, to have Hopes meaning not in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather in people. So this particular chair, actually, what echoes from this particular chair, 
The very same message which every Nabi, when he sat on his throne and started advising their ummats, what did they say? La as'alukum ajra. They did not want anything in exchange for that. They gave their waz, they gave their nasihat, they guided the people, but they wanted nothing in exchange. Why? So that they could clear their names from tuhmah and so that their nasiha could become only and solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nevertheless, the hadith that I quoted to you, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned, I'malu bi ta'atillah. Carry out the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wattaku ma'asi Allah. And stay away from the, the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa muru awladakum bi imtithal al-awamir wa ijtinab al-nawahi and command your children to do the same. Carry out the orders and stay away from the prohibitions. Because this is a shield from them and from you, uh, to shield them and you from the fire, from the fire. Hazrat Marana Abra al Haku used to say that look at this person, he's sitting under the fan, he wants the cool air because he's feeling so hot. But together with that, he puts his heater and he lights his fire just beneath that fan. Now that's the example of a person who is doing good deeds. Will he understand or will he enjoy or reap the benefits of any of those good deeds when side by side he's got the fire next to it? He's got the fire of Jahannam meaning he's committing sins. Allahu Akbar. The ayat of the Quran where Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O people of Iman, save yourselves and your families from the fire of Jahannam. This particular hadith which I quoted to you in my khutbah and I just gave you the translation now, is actually explaining this particular ayat. It is the essence of this ayat. Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, when he used to hear ayat, of adab and punishment. Once we were in the Fajr Salat and the Imam recited this particular verse, Inna batusha rabbika lashadeed. Verily, the punishment, the seizing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very severe. When he heard this year, such he was affected so deeply that he let off such a screeching sound in Salat that we would actually think at that point in time, if you were sat, had to be standing there, like the whole roof and ceiling was about to fall down and collapse. Allahu Akbar. So it is ilm and together with ilm, it is akhlaq. And that's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Allamani Rabbi fa ahsana ta'alimi. My Rabb gave me ilm and he perfected my knowledge. But he, he didn't just say that. And that was not the complete scenario of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but Allah ta'ala also taught him adab, culture, respect, etiquettes, manners, akhlaq وَأَدَّبَنِي Rabbi fa ahsana ta'adibi and my Rabb taught me manners and he gave me the best of character Allahu Akbar you people have listened uh, very attentively I was also very, very pleased to see the students here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase and take you from strength to strength. Let us make dua. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah fi al-deen wal-dunya wal-akhirah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-yusr wal-mu'afat fi al-dunya wal-akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give barakat in the renovations and the upkeep of the madrasa and take it from strength to strength. There are senior ulama here as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the matter and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, from us ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم بحرمة سيد النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم